Welcome to Dancing Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancing Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. Well, in this episode, we're going to take a look at a song called Signs from uh, 2010's Letting the Sunlight Back In LP. Uh, The song was originally written back in 2010. Um, And so we're going to listen to that original version, but we're also going to listen to another version. Uh, Now, it came out as a live uh, version on uh, uh, Live in the Black Hills from 2015. But this year, 2020, um, it is also my entry in the Tiny Desk concert. Um, And so we're going to listen to, uh, near the end of the episode, we're going to listen to that version as well. Uh, at least the audio of it. And then I'll uh, I'll place the uh, link to the video on the podcast page. Uh, so anyway, this is Signs uh, from 2010's Letting the Sunlight Back In. So we just talk about the 
reaches across the front seat and put his hand on my neck and he rubs it just like he did when I was just 21 my fiance had broke up with me and I was I was on a run from myself At a, at a youth camp down in, uh, in New Mexico. Uh, we worked there for uh, the better part of three years and uh, really loved it. Uh, two full summers, uh, the whole family, myself, my wife, uh, our daughters. And, and, um, and then because of differences, uh, it was a, a religious uh, youth camp and uh, we had some, uh, I guess I'd have to say, doctrinal and... Uh, um, scriptural differences um, in perspective, um, which played out as um, personnel differences in, uh, in who was doing what at the camp. Uh, because of that, uh, it, things got a little bit ugly. Um, and this would have been back in um, 2005, um, the entire board. It was governed by a board of directors. Um, and they got together and, uh, and uh, anyway, decided that I needed to, to hit the road. Um, and uh, that was after the 2005 um, summer. Um, 
we had two wonderful summers there, uh, both very successful, and, and we uh, loved it. But it was difficult uh, to watch folks uh, who had uh, uh, been considered uh, good friends, uh, some of them uh, becoming somewhat enemies, and then others just being, uh, I, I suppose, still friends, but just crying and doing nothing. Um, and that's always difficult. I don't know if you've been in a situation like that where uh, where something happens and uh, a a beloved institution uh, is is uh, is in the it hangs in the balance and um, and then uh, individuals sometimes individual human beings are sacrificed uh, at the altar of the institution. Uh, that I've seen that story happen over and over again, and this is the aftermath, I suppose, of of, of our story uh, that is like that. Um, so what happened then? Uh, my uh, my oldest daughter was uh, had, was on on off uh, to college um, pretty quickly, and uh, and uh, was done with camp. My younger daughter, though, uh, had uh, of course uh, was deeply connected in with uh, with a lot of friends in her session, and and uh, we felt very strongly. We didn't want to just say, "Well, you're not going back to that uh, that stupid camp anymore." Uh, so we definitely said, "You know, we're if you want to go, continue going to camp until you're, uh, you know, until you could go through your senior year in, in high school." And we said, "You know, we'll we'll get you back there." We moved. We moved up to to uh, South Dakota, uh, and so she continued to go and uh, continued to have good friends. And it was difficult for her; it was a difficult thing uh, because she had some dear memories, and 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 people had been obviously we had been hurt, and she had been hurt by the camp. But uh, you know, youth, uh, young people sometimes are able to. Uh, uh, sometimes they're better than old people at spitting out the bones, and you know. And just uh, dealing with the good stuff, and uh, she did a good job of that. Um, but one year, um, and it would have been, I believe, 2010, probably, and I believe it may have been her last year to go to camp. Uh, we needed to take her down for camp, and uh, and that was always difficult uh, for me. Um, I was the one available to drive her, um, but driving her down to camp also meant that we got to see a lot of people uh, who kind of reopened some difficult wounds and things like that. Um, so my father, uh, who lives here in town with us, uh, volunteered to go along with me, uh, help drive, but also I think more than that, just to be there, because he knew how difficult that was uh, for me. Um, and uh, But also I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have backed out of it for the world uh, to, to be able for, for my, my younger, our younger daughter to, to be able to, to, uh, to get her, her final year there at camp. And so, so that's what the trip was from uh, South Dakota down through Colorado to New Mexico to take, take my daughter to camp. So we'll take a look at the lyrics and talk a little bit about the ideas and then we'll talk a little bit about the music in this first version and then we'll take a listen to uh the new uh, tiny desk concert live version that i just did uh just just last week um and uh that's what we'll do this episode signs i went down to new mexico with my father and my little girl it was unreal and it was dreamlike it was like another world of enchantment, just like they say on the signs. So, of course, if you've been to New Mexico, you know that New Mexico is the land of enchantment, and it is. It was an enchanting place for us for, for many years. We, we absolutely loved it. Still love it, absolutely, despite difficult memories there. It's a beautiful, beautiful state um, with just absolutely uh, amazing culture and uh, beauty and uh, and wonderful, um, and that became kind of the uh, you know the idea behind the song, um, what the signs say, how these states present themselves, um, 
but also in a bigger way, you know, what signs, what are signs? What are we looking for? Signs, signs in the road sense, signs in a spiritual sense. Um, um, how do you read the signs? Do you even notice the signs? So, moving on in the song. It was rainy and it was gray all across the Rockies. I drove the pickup truck. My father slept a lot. He's getting older now. So am I. So am I. You know, I've written a lot about aging. And this, this was, you know literally 10 years ago, and so I was thinking about aging then. I'm obviously thinking about it even more now. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's, and it's a challenge um, as you get older, as you uh, watch your children get older, as you watch your parents get older. And, um, and, and I think a little bit of that is, is what causes us to, to, to really focus and really squeeze the most sometimes squeeze the most out of out of moments together which this song was like that for me um i don't always do that i'm not good at that i get busy and i get distracted but this song is is a place where i stopped and i said I, this is this is important stuff you know and my daughter well she isn't little anymore she's 17 and riding behind these two old men in the back seat with her headphones. And we're stopping once again for a bathroom and another cup of coffee. Um, part of getting older is, is, you know, for me at least, measuring my life in, in uh, cups of coffee and bathroom breaks. Uh, that's kind of part of the what happens to the plumbing. Um, and, uh, and my daughter, uh, of course, uh, your, your children, you always, at some level, you always see them as children. But, uh, but I was realizing, you know, she's 17. She's, of course, now she's, it's 10 years later, you know, so she's like 20, 27. Um, but, uh, but at that point, I was saying, wow, you know, both of my daughters have grown up. My older daughter is four years older than her, and so uh, so that's a piece of this song. Next verse, and my father knows how painful life can be, so we just talk about the signs we pass along the way. I'll pause there for a second. You know, I, I think underneath the surface there was a lot of thought in his mind and in my mind, and probably in in my daughter's mind as well about what this trip was, how difficult it was, what stuff everybody was thinking about. But we didn't, we didn't really talk about that. We just kind of talked about what was going by outside. We talked about the signs. We talked about what we saw, what we were passing through, what was immediate. And we knew that the other stuff was going on underneath there, but, uh, but that's, we didn't take this time to hash through all of that. And that's, that's all right sometimes. Sometimes you got to talk through it. Uh, there, was an, there was an alternative, and I think that alternative <clears throat> maybe is, is a part of what this song is about. The next line. But he reaches across the front seat to put his hand on my neck, and he rubs it, just like he did when I was just 21. And my fiance had broke up with me and I was on the run from myself or at least from who I thought I was going to be. Who I thought I was going to be. And then we move into an instrumental piece. So this is kind of the hinge of the song. This and, and, and one more line coming up. But um, a couple of important things, the touch, the physical touch. My, my, uh, my family growing up has always been physical touch, my, you know, rubbing each other's shoulders and backs and, and stuff like that, showing love through touch. Uh, that was always a big piece of my family, uh, a big part of my relationship with my father. 
and uh, and the story that I, I alluded to there when when uh, my current wife and I broke up uh, uh, briefly right before our wedding uh, many many years ago, and I was just devastated. And we eventually that that all worked out, uh, and we're still together, but. At that moment, I had no idea what was going to happen. And what I remember, you know, my dad said some things to me, I'm sure. And he helped me with some verbal wisdom. And I'm sure my mom helped me with some, some listening and some verbal wisdom. And, and friends did. But, but what, I'm, what I remember at that moment was my dad putting his hand on me and just putting his hand there and just, just you know, rubbing my neck. And, uh, and that's a huge thing. And that was a huge thing on this trip. That's the way he said he understood. He understood what was going on. And he was there with me. And that's extremely important. Um, And that's a big piece of it. Because, as I said, um, what had happened to me back there in the past was suddenly I was not, I thought I was not going to be who I thought I was going to be. I, I, I realized that the, the vision I had for things was just fell apart. Who I was just fell apart back then when, when, when my fiance and I broke up and when this happened at the camp. It, it, it's a parallel and, and we knew what we were, what I, he knew what I was thinking about, how big of a dream this had been and how it had not only fallen apart, but it had been crushed and, and at some level our family had been sort of trampled. And um, so who I am, as good as it is, as it is it's not what I thought I was going to be. And that's always difficult. Even when you become clearly aware of who you are and that that's a good thing, when you're hyper-conscious of who you were, you thought you were going to be, how far you've fallen short of that, that's still a difficult thing. Still a difficult thing. As much as we think we're able to be in the, in the moment, in the present, you know, still, it's not easy. It's not easy because we're human. So we have a little instrumental piece in there, and then we come in, come in to, back in to finish the song. So we drop off my daughter and her sleeping bag and her guitar for two weeks at camp. And there's laughing kids, and there's cars, and there's parents, and they're hugging their children. And the sun finally begins to shine. So we arrive at this place that I've been anticipating, and it's been dark and, and gray and gloomy this whole trip, and, and which is a sad thing when you're driving through Colorado to have it dark and gloomy and gray, and you can't even see the peaks. But the sun came out, and I saw, you know, this camp, as much as it's hurt me, as much as, as, as I'm frustrated with it, you know, their kids coming here, and their parents bringing their kids And it's an exciting thing, and they're excited. And it's about parents hugging their children. It's about touch. It's about about that love. And so the sun finally began to shine, and the sun literally did shine. The trip home was bright. And we are what we are, not what we were going to be. We are what we are, not what we were going to be. And in the song, that's the place where I say, hey, that's what's important. It doesn't matter what I was going to be. I am what I am, and that's good. And I'm here with my dad, here with my youngest daughter, and we love each other. And the road stretches from bathroom to cup of coffee. And my father and I, we trade off driving and sleeping, and he rubs my neck, and I rub his, and we can see all the peaks this time, all back through Colorado. It's so full of color, just like they say on all the signs, you know, colorful Colorado. It's so full of color, just like they say on all the signs, on all the signs. 
So this is a journey of uh, uh, of, of of dread, uh, of dread and darkness and grayness that turns turns into something full of sunshine and color and enchantment. And, um, and, and for one reason, really, because uh, the love is there and, and the touch and the togetherness in spite of all the pain of, of, of the history of what's happened. So in this version of the song, uh, it began. The song began as as an instrumental. I I had uh, uh, used my uh, classical guitar and uh, and um, and just uh, actually put together um, two tracks of classical guitar um, and uh, and really liked what I had. And so then I sat down um, and decided to basically tell a story. So. Uh, I, uh, I created the lyrics, not with the guitar in my hand, but with the guitar tracks already laid down. And I told the story uh, over that, um, which creates, uh, which is great because uh, it, 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 it gave the lyrics this, this just talking through it kind of feel, which I really love, especially for this song, for a story song. It feels like someone's just literally telling you a story. The challenge that it creates is that um, the lyrics didn't come along with the playing of the music. And so once I had recorded this, I thought, that's really, I don't know how I'm going to play and sing that ever. And so over the years, I had to work out what do I do with this song when I play and sing it live and I worked on it, and, and the, probably I've recorded this song live more than any other song that I've got. I mean, just little live versions on iPhones and things like that. But um, it, there are probably f- four or five out there on YouTube. Um, but I really, I really, th- I'm not saying I perfected it, but I really, I really got to a place where I feel really good about what I do with this song live now, and that's why it's my. 2020 Tiny Desk Concert entry, a live performance of it sitting in my office that I'll, I'll play for you here in just a little bit. Um, but in this original version, then, uh, once I had done the, the lyrics, I felt like it needed something else. And what it needed really was a steel guitar, uh, which I don't, I don't own and I don't play. So I, I, uh, I did have a, a, a pedal that had some really nice effects on it, uh, and I used an electric guitar and, and, and worked to get as, as gentle uh, background kind of, kind of steel guitar background bed, a dobro kind of sounding bed behind that as possible. That seemed to be what the song needed. And, and so it felt really good. In fact, on this album, probably this is, this is the song I love the most from this album. Um, it may be my favorite song that I've written. I'm not sure. That's hard to say because that feels unfair to all the others. But anyhow. So uh, so let's take a listen now to 2020's Tiny Desk Concert version. Uh, we'll play that and, uh, and I will definitely post the, the video um, on the uh, on the podcast site but we'll listen to the audio of that recording now and uh and then move toward the end of the episode hi i'm scott simpson uh welcome to my office uh, my desk my coffee mug my little bear on my coffee mug my uh k uh six string guitar old old guitar I picked up several years ago at a pawn shop uh, lots of stories in it um, I had thought about doing something really elaborate this year, um, but I'm keeping it simple. I want to sing you one of those stories, a song called Signs, about a uh, road trip uh, with my father and my daughter. And uh, we're going to record the whole thing on my iPhone. So here we go. <laughs> I went down to New Mexico with my 
my father and my little girl It was unreal and it was dreamlike It was like another world of enchantment Just like they say on all those signs It was rainy and it was gray All across the Rockies I drove the pickup truck And my father has slept a lot You see he's getting older now So am I Oh yeah, so am I But my daughter, you know She isn't really little anymore No, no, she is 17 Riding behind these two old men In the back seat She got her headphones on Yeah, we're stopping once again For a bathroom And another, and another, and another cup of coffee. But my father, he knows, he knows how painful life can be. So we just talk about the sign. Pass along the way And then he reaches across the front seat To put his hand on my neck And he rubs it Just like he did When I was just 21 and My fiance broke up with me See, I was on the run from myself, or at least from who I thought I was gonna be. Who I thought I was gonna be. Drop off my daughter With her sleeping bag and her guitar For two weeks at camp Yeah, there's laughing kids and there's cars, you know I look around and there's parents Yeah, they're hugging their children And the sun, where the sun She finally began to shine She finally began to shine And we are who we are Not what we were gonna be And the road stretches the Bathroom to cup of coffee and My father and I We trade off driving sleeping, yeah, and he rubs my neck, and I rub his, yeah, yeah, 
We can see all the peaks this time All back through Colorado It's so full of color Full of color just like they Just like they say On all the signs All the signs, yeah So full of color Just like they say On all the signs All the signs So that's the uh, the audio of my live uh, performance uh, for the Tiny Desk Concert 2020 of Signs. And that one's not available anywhere but on YouTube. Uh, but I'll post that uh, video on YouTube for you. Uh, it's got that little bit of commentary at the beginning. And, uh, and so uh, uh, excited to see how that goes this year. Uh, it's my third year to be part of the Tiny Desk Concert. There's all kinds of great, amazing, creative, wonderful songwriters out there doing amazing things uh, connected with Tiny Desk Concert. Um, and I got to do a little uh, whistling, uh, Im improvised whistling uh, instrumental uh, break there in the middle. So thank you for joining me again for another episode of Dance and Moon Songcast uh, you can find all my music all my lyrics at scottsimpsonmusic.com stream me on Spotify on iHeartRadio and on Apple Music and as always I deeply appreciate you joining me for uh, Dance and Moon Songcast my hope for you is that all of your journeys with loved ones will be enchanted and colorful be well.